Where to even start with this? This is something else, look, it's amazing. So look at all this gear, it's incredible. Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's me Mark and today we're going to have a look at this panel board. I'll explain exactly how we've got it, what it's doing and how we're going to use this at the Apprentice One to One Academy to maybe help pass on some of the skills and knowledge that people might be missing out in training and industry. Let's get straight to it. We may as well start at the beginning and that's with the front of the panel itself. So you can see this is a boiler circulation pump duty selector. So it's roughly speaking, I think around 20 years old. We'll have a look at some of the diagrams. It'll have dates on there so we can, we can date it. I'll explain how I came into possession of it and how we're going to use it here at the Apprentice One to One Academy. If I step back, you can see I've got it into this bay here. We've got some overhead uh, tray already up. We've got a, an isolating transformer point up there so we can work on this quite safely. You can see up here we've got our supply indicator. So when the power's switched on, can do that now because we've got the cover closed for the time being so you have the main isolating switch down here you can see that pops power on to the supply on um, indicator and then all of the other lights illuminate based on the operation mode you're selecting so you can see you've got summer and winter over here for your sensor selectors different areas that the pumps would be kicking out heating into and you can also have some manual extenders on there and again time clocks in the bottom we'll have a better look at this in a minute just want to show you the schematics for this so you can see it's actually dated for the year 2000 so it's around 20 years old and these were produced by R. Ducats and Co now basically it starts here so we have our supply input coming in so it's 240 volts on there as it was then 230 volts as we all know that now goes through a fire link which basically makes sure there's no fire in the room and if there is that power is killed off to everything else after that point and then you run into all of the contactors and controls for the different um, room sensors bits and pieces like that so this is the first stage of the schematics there and then over on this side this is kind of the second page these are a full-on a1 sheets but again um, needs two pages it's quite a big layout and you've got all of the the pumps coming off there as well so you've got the front teaching areas offices and pump which would drive the motor to send the water around the mechanical system to heat the space and then you've got all your relays contactors and such for the pumps over on this side now that's all really interesting on on paper and it's great for people who are going to come into the academy to look at this and understand how things are drawn out in plan form and then how they look in the actual real world but let's dive into this we'll have a little look inside this um, control box here and we'll see what's going on in terms of voltages on the internals. So first up we'll have a look around this while the power is off and then we'll get the power on and run through some little tests we can do just to show the kind of voltages we've got inside this control panel. I came into the possession of this through the awesome Eddie Clemens from Pegasus Electrical. For those of you who aren't already following him I'll drop links over to his socials in the description alongside this video but he is a BMS plant room control electrical slash mechanical engineer legend. The things he doesn't know about this aren't worth knowing. He's been doing it 30 odd years and longer and he's a true gent. So if you've not heard of the AM2 Lone Ranger as well, go and check that out. And again, there'll be links in the description alongside this video. Thank you very much, Eddie. This is incredible. Um, looking inside here though, we can see um, the power. I've left the, the trunk in open. You can see that there, but we've got our mains cable coming in, which again runs off the little box that's just up there. And again, that's just so we can give ourselves an element of safety down here. Um, it is 230 volts. And whilst this is open, the majority of it is going to obviously be live with accessible terminals. It's not all running at 230 volts. And I'll explain exactly what I mean by that in a minute as we have a little look closer in. But we'll just run through 
how it actually comes together inside here. Obviously for the minute the power is all off so there's no electrical energy in here whatsoever but you can see coming to the start this is where our supply cable would come in. This is a single phase panel board. So you can see we've got our line and neutral down here. There is a perspex cover because sometimes it's not possible to isolate the energy coming into the panel board itself to gain access to it. So there's an element of protection from any of the, the bitey bits with that fitted on there. And obviously once this is in the off position, anything after that is isolated anyway. So you can see here we have our line and neutral coming out of this switch, running along the finger trunking, and then this drops down into this bar here. So we have our, basically your split out and outputs come off this bar here. So we've got a neutral block, we've got our line inputs, some of the DC cabling drops down, obviously we've got our earth and other bits and pieces all start at this row. So you see on this second row here, we've got a series of AC relays and these are doing switching essentially when dials are moved, thermostats change or whatever else is going on. These operate and make different things happen outside of the panel itself. At this end, we've got our 24 volt DC power pack. So again, we have 230 volts AC coming in. We then drop that down to 24 volts, one amp, and that then runs out to the DC side of things which is over the other end of this board here so you can see at this side we've got the dc relay um, controller i'll swing you in a bit closer to have a look at that and you can see we've got our pos and neg into the top which is basically running 24 volts dc in we have the dc inputs on the top here which make certain events happen with this relay and then our outputs off the bottom here which essentially join a contact um, to switch something in or out. It is that simple, but a very complicated device. Even of its time, this is quite a complex thing. And today we have multiplex controls, all sorts of other um, fancy and brilliant bits of equipment that go in these BMS panel boards. So this is of an age where it's old tech essentially, but it's still the same principles underpinning everything. On the top row, we've got our red spot fuses. So if we open these, you can see we've got our red spot in there so these are GE power controls fuses and if you look on the back you can see it gives you its type and rating so these are 20 amps and they're usually sat on the um, legs running out to, to pumps and such so you've got a bit of overcurrent protection short circuit protection built in via a fuse up on here um, which is great and then we've got our contactors over this side and these basically move in and out as controls are operated within the system so we've got both line and neutral on these something so the contactors require power anyway to operate something operates on the front panel i'll show you that in a second these contactors would move in and out to operate pumps and such which is brilliant um, running down to the bottom at this side, you see we've got some spare red spot fuses, so they're built in, there's a couple taken out, so there's obviously been some replacements at some stage, but there's kind of maintenance built into the panel, which is fantastic, so they can operate um, and repair the thing without having to go and get spare parts from wholesalers. Bit of forward thinking, I like it. And then on the front door, essentially starting at the bottom, we've got a series of timers, and you can see on these, these are 230 volts mains again. Uh, we've then got a series of dials. So these are, are overrun timers again. So these are mains timers. You can select a number on the front. I'll show you it and it'll overrun what's going on. And then we've got the switches and lights that illuminate based on what's been switched in and out of the front control panel. So as the switches are operated, these move around. You can see these pins move in here and give us different options of what's going on with the control panel itself. We'll show it all in use and get into a bit of that later on, but just to give you an overview of what's inside. Now I've popped some basic PPE on, so I've got some gloves. I'm gonna use my GS38 probes on my voltage indicator, and we'll dive in and take a few measurements. Just, just a point of note at this um, isolating point up here, there is around 100 amps of prospective fault current. It's really low, we've tried to engineer it that way. So if there is an incident, the um, potential fault current that could flow is on the, the smaller side of the spectrum, but still enough to operate our overcurrent protective device, which in this case, is just a six amp type B RCBO. So again, we're not looking to run this as a system. You wouldn't be setting it up like that in the real world, 
we're trying to factor in some elements of safety in the amount of incident energy that might be here for people coming to work on this and also to ensure that the overcurrent protective device in the worst possible circumstances would still operate. And for those of you who've watched the earlier videos of this all being built, you will see and understand exactly what I'm talking about. We have been very conscious of safety at all levels. But in this case, I'm quite happy just with a set of gloves on. I've got my glasses on already just so I can see. If I don't wear these, I literally can't see any of the terminals to even get the probes on. I am an old electrician with very bad eyesight. So we'll come in a bit closer and we'll have a look. It's also a great opportunity to test out my TIS 8000. So this here is the AC and DC measuring tool from the good guys and girls at TIS. You've got the open jaws here as well. It is compliant for your safe isolation and you can also use it to measure just for live voltages. So we'll have a look at that as well. So this is generally something you wouldn't be doing out in the real world. I'm just doing this to try and explain what's going on a little bit inside here. So we've turned the main switch to the on position with the cover open. Now if I use my probe here and go onto the live terminal, you can see that's starting to alert me that there is a live AC voltage in there. And that's on the main input, um, sorry, the main output from that, that switch. And it doesn't matter which probe I use, it's going to tell me that that voltage is there. So you can use this to help you in terms of contact, a contact voltage indicator, which is great thinking of being out in a, um, a, an installation where you want to check if the bonding's carrying any voltage, for example. You can use this in the same way I've demonstrated the contact voltage indicators before. Fantastic. Now, in terms of getting our measurements for voltage and such, I'll come around this way. And again, it, it may look I'm nearer these parts than I actually am on camera so do rest assured I am being very cautious and safe if we use my GS38 probes pop those in there you can see I've got 247 volts AC you can see that coming up on camera it's a bit difficult to demonstrate all these things at once but I'm doing my best so I keep emphasizing this through the course of the video but safety is absolutely critical familiarizing yourself with the layout of all of this equipment the terminal numbers, the ID tags, and what is going into making this work. So you need to look around the panel board, make sure you're understanding what is live AC voltage, where the DC voltage comes in, and how all of these cables link together through the finger trunking. You need to ensure that you're maintaining a safe working state whilst going through the process of bolt binding. And you can see here, I've got my gloves in operation alongside the TIS 8000 with its GS38 probes. And that's to try and be able to demonstrate some of the voltages that are going on inside this um, BMS control panel, whilst also keeping myself safe. Even if we have got the safety isolating transformer and the earth mat on the floor. So you can see here, we've got the supply cable that comes up into the board and it then splits through all of the different finger trunking and terminal blocks into the relays, transformers, fuses, and contactors. Now I spec all this using the awesome Murdex Soft Electrical OM. I wanted to get a value of incident energy for down at these booths. We've been through the process of installing them in as safe a way as we possibly can, utilizing earth mats and RCDs. And you can see on here using OM, I'm building up the installation on the software itself. This is sped up. Um, it is a reasonably fast and quick process to build and install using the schematic builder and circuit chart details. You can input your cable types, your overcurrent protective devices from brands and generic as is applicable. And equally, you can choose separate conductors if you're running at 70 degrees with LSF cable, if you're in conduit on a wall and all of that good stuff. And you can see here, I'm just building the install up as we've got the academy. So we have the main Proteus board at the supply intake. We've then got the sub Proteus board down in the booths and that then divides off through an RCBO. One of the awesome add-ons from Electrical OM is the Arc Flash Study, where it will tell us the calorific per centimetre squared incident energy we might be expected to encounter at a particular piece of electrical equipment, all from the design software. You can advise on the type of PPE that might be appropriate. You can see in this case, it's telling us Class 00 gloves. We know the level of danger we might be encountering before we even get to the stage of construction. In some cases, any labeling that needs to be printed off and applied to equipment is all taken care of. This is a fantastic piece of software. 
If we go on to the output of the um, DC power pack, you can see I'm measuring 24 volts DC. It stopped getting too upset about that. There's no beeping or audible turn. It's just giving me a voltage measurement to say there's 24 volts DC there. I want to bring you in a bit closer, get me out of shot and show you a bit closer at what we're doing. So if we have a look at this 24 volt DC re relay at the um, board here, I'll just get this position so I can leave it lent up and you might have a chance of seeing it. Gonna have to take the GS38 probes to get into these terminals. They're a little bit deeper than um, the other ones, so we'll be very careful. Although it's only 24 volts, we don't want any flashes or bangs. So we can see in there, we have got the 24 volts on the outputs of that um, DC regular, which is what we'd expect and want to see. So that's great. And you can see here we've got the 24 volts coming in, we've got the DC inputs um, along the top, and then we've got our relay outputs on the bottom. And these are going in pairs um, through a switch, essentially to turn on and off based on the input commands coming into this relay. So you can see here we've got some relays and these are AC 230 volt relays. So these are mains voltage. Um, if we hold the one end of the probe onto an earth and go across here, you'll see again with the GS38 probes, we've got 245 volts. 245 volts and then on the output terminals the same so if these relays are held closed by the commands on the front of the um, panel board this will output voltage based on the selections you might have over on there so if we have a look up here you can see we've got some of our ac contactors with the various input and outputs again you see the neutral up on here then we've got our lines to provide voltage to the contactor and also then the, the power that's coming in and out based on what's going on in the wider install. If we was to press the stop and reset button here, you can see, you can see that there, it's swinging the contactor in and out to test it. See that as you move along. Um, and you won't be able to see that, but off, off camera as I'm pressing these, the LED lights are going on and off based on whatever it is that this is actually switching in and out on the front control panel. Um, so I'll swing you around and you can have a little look at that. But if you, if you see, imagine me pressing one of these contactors, again with a probe, and you can see that light going on and off there. Hopefully you can. Just shining through the front. So you can see as the switch is operated on the front of this panel board, this then affects these contactors to start doing different things. And we'll delve into all of this with Eddie himself because he's going to be able to explain this far better than I can. I'm a mere electrician, panel board and BMS stuff is not my wheelhouse. I'm just trying to demonstrate this here to you on a video today that I hope is making some sense. If we look at this, this is electronic. There are buttons on the front to press and controls um, and things to set and make things happen. But essentially you have inputs at a DC side and then outputs at a DC side. So these are relay outputs, essentially they're just switches. So they're just switching the line and you see there's an, um, basically the circuit comes in get switched here if something's happened on the input side to then allow the voltage to pass through and thus current to flow on the output side. So these are, are really useful devices to control lots of switching things in one modular um, product, which is great. And essentially that's kind of it inside here. You know, it looks quite complicated, but when you break it down, you have just got a series of um, contactors, relays, fuses for safety. So if anything's gone short circuit or there's an, an overcurrent, it's going to operate. We've got our um, DC transformer down here essentially. So we've got the AC voltage coming in, transforms that to 24 volts DC, just one amp. So there's not a great deal of current flow in there. And that can then be used um, in terms of the wider BMS system. So we'll put the front cover back on and we'll have a little look and listen with the power on to some of these relays going. Before we do that though, I will just show you the back of this board because it's kind of the last the last little bit. So we can see on the back of here, we've got the mains cables run around again. So this is mains voltage largely, rather than the 24 volts DC. So if I'm to probe onto this one that we know is energized, you can see we're getting that alert there on the TIS 8000. So using it as a contact voltage indicator to show that there is a live voltage there and we don't want to be going anywhere near it. That's one of the reasons you should try and avoid live working on panel boards. So much of it is energized all around you. You've got the door that's potentially flapping around with all this live voltage in. Obviously this is a controlled environment with a safety isolating transformer and the low fault current leading into that and all of the other things we've spoken about. 
But even so, essentially this is live working and you need to be certain that that is justifiable in all cases and at all times. And, and usually with panel boards, there are things you can do with the power off to rectify most faults. But that said, some of the controls on panel boards these days involve complex electronics. And without power being present on them, it's difficult to say which component has actually failed. So you will often find the um, electrical engineers working on these systems will be working under safe permits of live working. It's important to have a permit to do that work. So you do your risk assessment method statement and approach it with the appropriate PPE and supervision to do it as safely as you possibly can. But just to show you on the back here, you have the wires coming out the finger trunk in. We're running across to these um, time clocks along the bottom here. We've got some relays on the switches basically. So as these switches are thrown, um, they change the, the output links on the back and that'll then trigger stuff that's going on inside the panel board itself. So we are largely back into a safe condition now or as safe as you ever can be around electrical equipment. The door's closed, the power's on and it's just to really demonstrate some of what this is all about. So you can see behind here we have got the um, time clock for the front teaching areas and office as this would be installed in the location it was used. This time clock would tick along and then during the periods they were wanting the, the system to be operating that time clock would trigger things elsewhere to make the system come to life. So you can see up here we've got our boiler number one and it's currently in the run mode. If we switch it to the off position, that light would go off. The boiler light goes off because there's currently no boiler selected. If we go on to number two boiler, so the backup boiler, you can see here now we get the run light on the boiler itself. You can see that switching over. So if we pop the boiler into the off position, you can see the boiler light turns off to say that it's not going to run. And then in the auto mode, if all the time clocks and everything else is playing nice, the boiler will run and the system will operate. As you can see here, we've got the front pump. If we turn that to off again, so the pump's not going to run. It's not going to run the um, chapel and lounge cultural hall and stage pump as illuminated down here. So it's kind of drop your way down through the, the main panel. It kind of subdivides into the system. So on the bottom here, you've got your time clocks that are going to allow activation at certain times of the day. You've got your main power coming in the top and then it kind of runs through the um, boilers in use through the system. So if we swing that into the off position, you can see that's now not going to run. This one won't run. That one won't run. There is a plant extension timer. So again, you can hear that's a mechanical timer. If you were wanting to um, overrun, you can do that with these extension timers. And again, these are all... Oops digital so you can see there's a digital time clock i expect these were maybe replaced at some time or another and not original to the first install i'm going to speculate they might have been mechanical time clocks rather than these digital ones who knows and then again here you can see there's the switch to summer in warmer weather so when your season selectors popped over to summer that's going to adjust the configuration of the um, thermostats triggering the heating to come on and off um, and the system will behave differently to try and not consume as much energy I guess over summer months when it's naturally warmer. If you, if you can hear this I'll try and get my microphone in as close as I can but as I swing this into operating mode you should hear the contacts are swinging over inside this control panel and that was kind of what I was doing in there when I was pressing those test buttons in and out and these lights were going on and off. This is actually what happens when you move the switch and the contacts in the back of this switch apply voltage onto the contactor, which will then um, lock it into position so that voltage starts firing around the system in other places. You can hear that one there. And as we move these. So the boiler is external to the panel board itself, so this is really just the light to say that voltage has been applied to the boiler so it could run. Obviously, it's not got a contactor to switch it in and out in there. And then the front pump, the same. You can hear the contactor. So this is really basic, but very, very useful information for an operator. And also for us as engineers coming to work on these systems, you have a process of illumination. So you can see that there is energy there. You can understand if something's tripped and gone into a fault state. See, there's all these trip lights here. So if you have something go wrong while the system's been operated that light will stay illuminated to let you know that that's what's happened and again as these have been switched on and off essentially you can see that that's been the case as well
So sometimes when you're thinking about this kind of work, it can feel a bit complex. There's all these different um, products inside this box and on some of the BMS panel boards that you see out on site today, there is a lot of complex electronics in there as well. But ultimately it's all controlling very basic switching of devices that need to come in and out of circuit based on what the um, operators of the system are asking for or some of the automatic controls you'll find out on these systems today. So you'll have environmental sensors external to a building, individual room temperatures. There is a lot more smart tech going into it today. But the basic switching principles of running pumps and pumping water and air around buildings essentially still hasn't changed. It's, it's much the same and this gives a good overview of how that can be made to work. So we're going to get some more modern BMS systems brought in here as well. So we're going to look at some of the equipment that's available today in terms of digital and electronic and smart tech controlling um, these building services essentially. And we'll have a run through some of that as well in a future video. But I just thought this was a good intro. We've not covered it on the channel before. It was just a basic run through. I've tried to demonstrate in as much detail as I possibly can what's going on inside here, but whilst remaining safe. Um, and yeah, I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you've got any questions along the lines of what this is all about, please do drop them in the comments below. And if I can't answer, I'll point Eddie and Jamie at it so they can give you the answer that you might be looking for. If there's any content in particular you're looking for around panel boards and BMS controls, let me know as well in the comments. I'm happy to try and produce it alongside those good guys and girls who are helping us out here. So as you can probably tell, I was super excited to get my hands on this board. I'm really grateful to Eddie. He's an absolute superstar. He's always looking out for other people in industry from apprentices to seasoned electricians and everyone in the middle. He's an absolute superstar, so please do go look in the description and make sure you head over and follow Eddie on his socials because he shares some great stuff day to day as it is. And yeah, I've enjoyed sharing this with you on this one. If you've got any questions, drop them in below. Until the next time, I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.